I don't want it to end. They want their name changed. Yes, their name changed. Yes. We had two circular burning features. Is that the technical term? Nothing to stay content, big and hold. Was that good archaeology chat for you? What do you want me to do? I don't mind a camera in my face. We're, I think, three days, two days. I, I don't even know what day it is. End of dig place, uh, which happens every year, surprisingly, especially here. Um, it's been insane and cool and wonderful, and I am exhausted and probably like three shades darker. And I haven't looked in a mirror for about 48 hours, so I'm hoping for the best. It's been a phenomenal uh, two weeks, not least the weather that we've had that's made everything so possible. Um, it's, it's been better than, than, than I could have hoped for going into this. I don't want it to end. <laughs> not quite yet, not quite yet. It's, it's bizarre to think that we're, we're really nearly done. But do you know what? The, the best things always happen at, right at the last minute. So who knows what's about to happen today and tomorrow. Well, it's some kind of ceramic, yeah, of industrial waste. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we'll just put that down as industrial waste, that down as slag. Yeah. All of that. And the coal goes out, right? Yeah. Cool. But that's coal as well. Chill. I know that is charcoal. Okay. I would put it all, to, I would just put it all in. Yeah. Uh, industrial debris. Okay, cool. Thank to you. To be honest, it's all part and part mm. parcel of the same thing. And that is 382. 382. Are these um, finished samples, the small ones? Uh, that one is, that one isn't quite yet. Is that a special one? That's from inside of there. Yeah, but does, do you know if that needs a red tag? Is that one that will need special uh, processing or? Potentially not fast enough, I'm not sure, to be honest. Okay. I know nothing. Thanks. What's been really good in terms of the digging is um, probably because we have less people, we've been able to really focus on, on the digging and make phenomenal progress. We've taken it down probably more in this season than we have for the last previous two seasons put together. And that's really cleared things up in terms of our understanding of the site, our understanding of the sequence, and quite enigmatically, that whole feature in the northwest corner, the mystery circular features, has really started to come alive. We've started to really understand uh, what's, what's going on there. So very, very excited by, by this season. Really excited about the, the metalworking site. It's, well, I've never excavated one before. So it's a challenge for me. Um, the specialists all seem excited about it too. We're having to deal with it quite carefully because you don't find them every day. And it's something we're gonna to have to be thinking long and hard about over the next year before we come back. Hi, Jerry, can you hear me? <laughs> How long have you got left? Have you just got next week or? No, just three more week. days after Don't today. Don't say that. <laughs> That's basically time team, isn't it? Yeah. Three days to find out. Three days, this year, this year. Yeah. Right, okay. The critical thing we need to do really is to confirm that it's a smithy. Yeah. That if you could take some samples just to so that we can look at them and confirm that it is hammer scale. Yeah. And obviously what we want to really understand is is it where they're producing, you know, high quality 
artifacts or shoeing horses, basically. It's not something we've ever done before, a, a kind of remote, a remote phone call on site. Um, but nonetheless, you know, nowadays you can send photos, you can send phone images. The value of doing the 3D modelling really came out as well. So yeah, he was able to look at all those and we were able to do a little conference on site. And yeah, he was able to tell us that actually we've got a smithy area. It is important. I don't think any of us quite realised how important it was, to be honest. On a scale of 1 to 10, how cool is it to have an early medieval smithy on Lindisfarne? On a scale of 1 to 10, about 20, but... <laughs> Everybody thinks smithies are everywhere, but they're not. They are very, very few and far between. And if, if this is, um, you know, one of those high status smithies producing those really um, intricate, um, high value objects, then it's even more important. And how amazing to find it here um, on Lindisfarne, the centre of the early medieval um, monastery. I'm just very content digging holes. That's what I like anyway. Well, before we actually lift the sample, yeah. I'll mark on present day magnetic north. Yeah. So I'll put a north arrow on there yeah. using a magnetic compass. Well, Anne, Anne came from the University of Bradford and she's doing a PhD here, and what she's looking at is archaeomagnetic dating. And uh, very basically, we know that magnetic north actually changes in position over time and if you heat something up and cool it down again, if it's heated up enough and cooled down enough, it will kind of preserve where magnetic north was at the point that heating happened. So if you've got something like a hearth or a fireplace which hasn't moved and it's been heated up, you can actually date, use that as a, using that principle as a way of dating it. So the key thing for us is to put some absolute dates on that relative sequence of events. And by using that, and also by using things like carbon-14 dating, for which we can use on the charcoal and the human bone, and any finds we get, that all comes together. We integrate all these different types of evidence to help us build up the, a, a sense of what actually happened over time and, and when it happened. We're on a bit of a cliffhanger because we're We've basically had to admit that we're not going to get everything done this time and that we're going to have to come back and look at it in more detail next year. Radio carbon date. You can do a radio carbon date dance. Radio carbon date. Anyway, I wanted to show you something else, Wade. So remember that thing that you found? Yes. That tiny thing. The that tiny, tiny, anything. tiny thing. Because right. it's actually found with a neonate, right? Yes. The neonate. So I sent it to Hannah, who will look at all the bones. And Hannah then actually said that she thinks it's part of the tail of a baby dolphin. No. <laughs> That's so tiny. It reminds me of, so it reminds her of these. Right. And ours is obviously much smaller. And she thinks it might be a tail vertebrae from a baby dolphin. Um, or a poor poison. So we've had whale, yep. seal, and now we might have now dolphin, dolphin or possibly, poor or poor poise. Yeah. That uh, is well spotted. Well if spotted. I may say myself. <laughs> and do you know how it works in archaeology? Sometimes the best things come out at the end? Yes. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I mean, if it. I would. Uh, See, the thing is, when it comes to the end of the dig, I'm already halfway with my brain in like, we need to get everything packed up. So if they came up with something on the last day that was huge and that actually needed to be processed or cleaned or whatever, then I would probably lose my mind. Jill here found this stone while she was cleaning the pebbles and it has a hole that goes through. And this is the first pebble that we found. Oh, it yeah. actually has a hole and it goes through. We checked, we, checked, we actually Some poked something through. COVID has changed the finds room in so far as it is a bit more difficult to look at things together. Things are sometimes very small, so you have to come really close. And then if you're trying to show somebody else, um, that is difficult because we just can't get as close as we would normally with our heads. 2020 has been such a sucker punch. You know, there's just feels like there's no relief. And 
being out here in the kind of weather that we've had has been a factor because you feel comfortable being outside and being outside right now is a really necessary thing for feeling comfortable I think so thankfully the weather has really helped us in that regard because if it was chucking it down or really freezing or whatever you know it would have been so much harder for a large proportion of our ventures it's been the first time that they've been out and doing something since the start of lockdown and um, it's been really really positive and I think people have just been so happy to be out and interacting with, with other people again. We're keeping people in their own pods, little work groups, we've got one way systems, we're wearing gloves, face masks, really going the whole hog. Yeah it's been weird, I think there's no, there's no, there's no doubting that. The place where I felt it least is actually on site. When you're actually on site doing the archaeology, we've not had to change what we do much. We've got processes and systems to make sure people don't kind of you know, interact too much, but the actual physical digging hasn't changed that much, apart from everybody having to wear masks. But then again, it does keep all the dust out of your eyes and water out your mouth and nose anyway. Have you guys figured the one-way system out yet? Yeah. I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> There are aspects of, of what's, what we've done to change how the site works that I think, like ironically, we're actually going to keep going forward. But uh, it'll take me some time to get used to the idea of a one-way system on the site. I'm not sure I'm very good at that one. You know, all, all my early, early med mates are just mm. like, <laughs> oh, you know, that's like really, really interesting. Yeah, just keep on my mind. You've got early med mates. Early med mates, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Early med <laughs> As I said, I think this has been the best season. I know we've not found any whizzy stuff. Mm. We've not found gaming pieces or sculpture, but we found lots of features mm. and stratigraphy. And actually, we've got a proper site which isn't just layers of rubble mm. interleaved with skeletons, mm. <laughs> which is which, which is kind of defined it in previous years. So, mm. in terms of actual making progress on the archaeology, mm. I've been yeah, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I think the key thing would be a date. A date from one of the graves cutting the big feature, mm -hmm. yeah. a date from the charcoal from the base of the big feature, mm -hmm. and maybe a date from one of the charcoal -y bits. I'd certainly like to move, yeah. you know, expand into the metalworking area because mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. the kind of where yeah. it's where it's all happening, it's where the, the coins are coming out, it's where all the structural stuff is. Mm. So there's no harm in, in taking it larger get, than yeah, we get the having it large, yeah. you know, and uh, go big or go home. Yeah. <laughs> I think the digger should be here in the next three quarters of an hour. So if we can get it all ready so that he can just charge straight in and get that one backfilled, that would be great. It's been a strange year. It's weird not being in the field. It's good to get out and about and get digging again. It feels like we've really come together to rise to a challenge and I think, I feel that we've been really successful. Archaeology waits for no one, as they say, neither does the tide, so... No, I said can I just put my stuff in the car? <laughs> What do you want me to do? Put your stuff in the car. It was very nice. It was a really nice atmosphere everywhere. And people really enjoyed it. People really loved it. So I think they had a good time and so did I. My highlight has been the sense of freedom of walking around the island. And that sense of space and openness has been the thing that I, I, I've clearly been missing all of this time. <laughs> oh, David! You should have asked for help! Um, and I can see it on everybody's faces as well. The, the being outside, the being amongst people, um, the coming together to make something happen, that has been my highlight. just this place has been amazing. This island where, you know, twice a day the tide cuts you off and you've got the views of two castles in the backgrounds, the amazing wildlife, the sunsets, the sunrises, the, the beaches and the swimming. Uh, it's all a little microcosm of a little paradise.
for those of you who know Dig Ventures at all, or you know, we had a dig dog called Fergus. And Fergus was with me for 17 years and he was with this team for at least 40 digs. He was the consummate professional. And we lost Fergus uh, whilst we were on site this year. And I know that's kind of like a downer thing to mention, but when I think about my highlights, it was being able to spend those final moments with him here because he loved Lindisfarne. Jobs are good and yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.